Jeff and Jeremy here. We uh, got that $1,000 playlist kicking around. You could win yourself instant cash today if you hear your songs played. It's the cash. Yeah. It's the cash. Uh, we're, you know, I was sitting there doing the math on this. We've already given away well over $1,000. we got another $1,000 to give away just this week. We're going to try to anyways, and another $1,000 next week. So, um, yeah, lots of money to be had. All you have to do is listen for your playlist. If you haven't submitted it yet, it's just three songs. You pick them, Classic Rock. Go to KZOZ.com. Click on the $1,000 playlist brought to you by Perry Ford Lincoln, and you can submit there, and, and you're set to go. This is Dumbass of the Day now, and it's brought to you by Peterson's U-Cart. They got the gold standard in landscape gravel. It is? California gold. Um <laughs> Yeah, it just throws off the whole momentum. But why? I'm, I'm, I'm getting through it. I want to get him saying it. Oh. I don't want to. I don't want to make fun of the dead. All right, in, we'll work in, on that. In, 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 Can we have in, it by tomorrow? I don't know. I'm by not gonna, Friday. I'm not going to promise anything. By Friday. It's my daughter's birthday this weekend. Got a lot of uh, California gold to lay around in the backyard. Always an excuse with you. I know your daughter's birthday. Is I think a big they'd deal. appreciate it more if I went there and bought California gold as opposed to just say California gold. No, just get the Hauser, would you? They got California gold. Do you know how YouTube works? You said you were going to do it. <laughs> it's on you sale right now. You said you were going to do a festival of convenience. Still has not happened. Yeah, I, know. I <laughs> will get you the California gold from Yule Hauser okay, the minute fine. we get the festival of convenience. Right, we're doing it this Friday. I hope you can make it. I know it's your daughter's birthday. <laughs> no. California gold. And they also have green, regular decomposed granite and three-quarter rock, 10% off during this month. Free delivery in A-Town. Peterson, the letter U, cart.com. How pathetic can some people be? I'm from a small town, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, yeah. And I, I live in New York, so when I'm going home, I'm going to see my family, right? But the dudes on the plane next to me are going to partake in the Shangri-La of debauchery. So they're singing about what they're going to see, and I got nothing. You know, they're next to me. They're like, yeah, Vegas, there's going to be cocaine and hookers. <laughs> and then I'm just like, I'm going to sleep on my mom's couch. <laughs> Or they're like, we're going to drink and gamble all day and night. And then I'm just like, I hope she makes her spaghetti. Splash of cinnamon, that's the secret to my mom's black people spaghetti. <laughs> or they're like, we're going to have experiences we'll never forget slash never remember. <laughs> And then I'm like, I'm going to get into an awkward conversation with my white stepfather about who started slavery. <laughs> then I'll walk away and say, I don't want to talk about this. An hour later, he'll come over to me with the printout from the internet, throw it in my lap and say, see, Africans started it. And instead of stabbing him in the chest, I'll just say, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. Some issues. Uh, all right. Oh, I am starting to see what's going on here. Sorry, I apologize. I'm going to turn that down. They moved it on me. Um, excuses, excuses. What is it about? Uh, he said cinnamon in spaghetti. It's a black people thing. I don't know. I've never had it. I just think that's so weird. Like, I doubt that all black people put cinnamon in their spaghetti. Makes me want to try it. I totally want to try it. I'm know. a cinnamon fan. Uh, in your spaghetti? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, to me, I wouldn't think about that. But who am I to judge? Desserts, I don't know. Yes. It could be tasty. Spaghetti, no, but could, who knows? It could be tasty. The right amount might just well, the give sauce, it the kick it needs. The sauce, you never know what makes a person's sauce, and sometimes it's the secret ingredient. Maybe it's really good. Oh, we're on the same page. I want to try it. But I'm a fat kid. I like to try everything. At least once. When it comes to food. Not everything. Just settle down. Uh, let's see. This is a very familiar feeling. You ever lose a bunch of money at a casino? Yes. You ever think about, like, man, I wish I could blow this place up? And I say, <laughs> I'm going to the all-you-can-eat buffet now. Gonna soak my sorrows in some dessert. And do you ever just take extra, even though you're going to throw it away, just so you can get one back on oh, the yeah. casino? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like, you know what? I don't want this stupid food. I'm going to throw it away. How's that? Huh? Yeah. How do you like that? How do you like it? I know you took my $400, but how do you like that? $400 worth of food. This woman lost $400 playing slot machines. This happened in Florida. 
after she left the casino, she was so pissed at this casino in Tampa that she called in a bomb threat. It's the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tampa. She said, I left a bomb in your casino, bitch. Since uh, she's a member of the Hard Rock's Players Club, you know, like they give you the little card to put in the machine, the reward program, her phone number was in casino records. And they were able to identify her because she called in and her phone number came up on the caller ID. It was able to be traced in to their system. Oh, well, hold on. That's her name's Adele Belazar. Anyways, they went and arrested her. Said she lost $380 and upset her. She needed to blow off some steam, so she thought she would call in the bomb threat. She is now being held on $20,000 punt. <laughs> it's a little bit more than $400 that she lost in the casino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a downward spiral of losing money. Uh, why is it that when I feel like I go gambling, I either win big or I lose big? It's never just win a couple hundred dollars. Hey, I won $200. Nope. I won, you know. I broke even as many times as I've won a yeah. lot. Do. It's either breaking, I win or lose. breaking even, I, I consider a loss, though. Yes, so do I. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. I got my hundred bucks back. I put in when I started, but I really feel like a loser because I sat here for three hours. I'm not walking away with anything. And there's no story in breaking even. You know, like if you lose a lot, you're like, <laughs> you end up, you know, um, calling in a bomb threat to the casino and then getting thrown in jail, and that's a story. Um, you know, you win a lot and you go on an escapade of debauchery in Vegas uh, because you have the disposable income. When you go and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm about $40 ahead for the trip. <laughs> There's no story in being $40 ahead for the trip. <laughs> There's just none. Yeah, I guess I paid for my entertainment. That's the story that you have. Yeah, I guess I paid for my weekend. Ooh, yay, cool. No story, no story, no cool story attached to that. And just know if you get really upset. I have a and feeling you, today's you a wanna, break even day on the program. You want to call in a bomb threat? Just don't do it from your private cell phone. Maybe find another phone to do it from. That way they can't track your ID. Congratulations, Adele Bazaar, for losing three hundred dollars and calling Adele in a bomb Bazaar, threat. Adele Bazaar at the Hard Rock Casino Resort in Tampa Bay, Florida. You were Jeff and Jeremy. Dumbass of the day. Jeff and Jeremy here online at KZOZ.com. Uh, Tascadero State Hospital is hiring. They've got a jobs fair coming up. Richard's on the line to tell us all about it, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. You know, I have so many questions about this place, and I guess if somebody wants to work there, they probably have very similar questions. Um, yes. I kind of feel like when you work there, it's like going on your own island, and it's totally okay. separate from everything else. Is it? Does it feel like that? It kind of does sometimes. I think because we're sort of like um, a perception, you know, kind of secretive. We really can't have uh, folks come tour from the community like we used to in the old days because of HIPAA concerns and privacy for our patients. But it can feel that way. Um, whenever I talk about it with folks in the community that, you know, don't work here, they're always asking me, so I'm peppering me with all these questions, and I'm always happy to kind of address them. But, but I, I will say that we are one of the biggest employers in the whole county. Uh, we are absolutely still hiring, uh, have been the entire time during COVID. And that's what our virtual career fair, by the way, if, if you don't mind, it's Friday, May 21st from 10 to 11. And um, there's actually a pre-registration necessary. Um, and you can find the icon, the DSH Tascator icon. I just looked on my phone right now. It's towards the bottom of the KZOZ.com website. And if you just click on that, it'll take you to a survey monkey. It'll answer a couple of questions, and then we'll follow up with a link uh, before the fair. Um, but it's going to be like a traditional job fair with lots of different kinds of uh, uh, booths, and, and that's what I'll kind of address because maybe that'll kind of answer your question a little bit too. We have administrative services, so we'll have like admin folks. We have uh, you know obviously healthcare professionals. I think most people would probably realize that. <laughs> Everything from psychologists and psychiatrists to nurses to psych techs. Uh, but we have like plant operations guys, you know, the gals that uh, work as plumbers, electricians, those kinds of things, maintenance mechanics. Um, we have our uh, general services like custodians. We have nutrition services with food service. So it kind of runs the gamut all the way from, you know, a more entry level kind of all the way to, you know, a, a Ph.D. doctorate level. And then we also have police officers. So we have one of the largest police departments in the entire county. 
You know, uh, Richard, I, I mean, uh, if, if, listen, if you want to change careers from yeah. recruitment coordinator to DJ, you could do it. You can talk oh, switch. so <laughs> fast. And, and, but I, I yeah. can understand everything that you're saying. I'm oh, very impressed. You. Yeah. Um, you know, for once, yeah, my wife would probably disagree, but for once, I'm actually, uh, making myself clear. Thank you. <laughs> um, my but, wife says the same thing. It's yeah, funny, right, Richard. I, I used to um, uh, moonlight, um, yeah. not moonlight, but pick up some extra cash with the side hustle, and I worked for a ride sharing service, and I would yeah. uh, take many of your employees to work um, sometimes. And okay. every time um, I got that call to take uh, an employee that you work with there at the um, state hospital in the Tascadero, they would uh, tell me how much they liked their job, one, and in two different oca- occasions, uh, people were like saying, you should try to get a job there. <laughs> and they make it well, sound you know, very whole, appealing. Uh, yeah, listen, guys, if the whole radio thing doesn't work out, I'm happy to uh, you know, assist you as best I can. But, you don't have a radio no, we, station we, there, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, have, we, have, um, we, we, do, we do have, I think a lot of our folks do enjoy working here. I, I really do. Um, look, there's a perception about this place that it, it can be, and, and I don't want to shy away from that. There is a risk element to working with this population. But first of all, half our staff aren't doing patient care. Um, you know, so they're going to be doing all those support and ancillary roles that are really important for keeping operations running, but really don't, you're not going to be, you know, um, doing any patient care and you're not going to be, uh, you know, responding to any patients in any way. But how long have um, you worked there, Richard? I've worked there since 2009. I started as part time. I, I joined the psych tech program. I was a bartender. You know, I just was like, oh, yeah. what am I going to do with my life? My knees are killing me and I don't think I can do this for the rest of my do life. You feel, like my do you feel safe every day when you go to work? I do. I do feel safe. Um, there are times here that you, you know, look, there's, here's what we do to mitigate risk, okay? Um, we have really great training on how to de-escalate patients. That's right off the bat. We, we really do work hard on that. But we have our, one of the largest police departments, so they're there to back us up. We have our personal alarms. Um, you know, you're going to be in a room full of staff within a few minutes if a patient does happen to go into crisis, which occasionally they do. I don't want to shy away from that either. But a nurse once told me she worked as a, 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 a nurse in an emergency room in L.A. County for 20 years or something. She once told me that was a much more unstable, dangerous environment mm-hmm. because here we're all trained on how to deal with folks like that. Our police officers are really trained on how to de-escalate uh, patients, of course, our healthcare professionals as well. So it's like that's what we do all day. We are dealing with, with folks who are kind of, uh, you know, going to go into crisis at some point, uh, you know, and, and that's always a, a possibility, I should say. But, you know, we do a lot of that. We have great medications on board. We have so many staff that are really working hard to make sure that we meet the goal, which is to provide the best treatment we can, but also to keep everybody safe, including the patients, by the way, to keep everybody safe and to be able to say at the end of the day, you know, we helped someone and we went home safely. And and I, I think it's an amazing thing. And when you see it done, when I first came in, I was awe-inspired by that. And yeah. so that's a part of it, too. You know, you great, yeah, great pay, uh, great benefits. The retirement is the gold standard for the state of California um, compared to the private sector or any other government entity. I guarantee but, it's better than radio. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, and that and that's the thing. No, I mean, I think so many people within the sound of our voices right now have yeah. um, had whatever a curveball thrown at them in the last year and a half. Oh gosh, yeah. That right. now opportunity might be knocking uh, for yeah. your to get a career, and you only live once. And quality of life is definitely something that you need to uh, be achieving. And it sounds as if though you know a, a, a career at the uh, state hospital in Atascadero might be a, a good route to that with some of the great, uh, you know, retirement and, and benefits programs that you guys offer. My cousin Absolutely. is yeah. a pharmacy tech, right? She worked at Walgreens. Yeah. She worked at all these different pharmacies. Yeah. She got a job at the state hospital up in Washington State. Very yeah. similar to what you do at Ash. It is very similar. Actually. And I think their system is the closest. Yeah, and I got to tell you, she works in wards, and you know, she she what she her job is is to get all the medications ready uh, mm-hmm. and deliver them. She says it's the most entertaining, fun job. She never knows every day. Most of the people she deals with are just hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she can't tell me too much because of HIPAA, right. but she'll right. just say, you know, it's always exciting. I'm not scared, and there are every once in a while there's a thing, and I just yeah. go in this closet, I lock the door, and I hit my little personal button. And then and everybody's yeah. there in seconds. And well, she goes, because I ask like her a, all the time, uh, yeah. you know, what it's like. And because she works in the ward, you know, as a, as right. a pharmacy tech. With and the patients directly. She yeah. loves it. Um, yeah. 
She says you know, it's great. You have to have a sense of humor when you work in healthcare. I think it's good to have that to be able to laugh. Um, we, we never laugh at our patients. We give them dignity and, and all those kinds of things. But they do say um, some, some things that will make you laugh. They'll laugh too. And uh, we, we have a chuckle. And you, and you sort of try to maybe in some ways, um, that's a really great tool for, you know, maybe lowering the temperature when, when you know, things are getting heated. Um, and, and, uh, and I will tell you that people with mental illness do have a great sense of humor. And that, that's an important part of this. And it is very satisfying. I, I, I really do like working with them. And the other thing is, you know, you come to us, as, so we've had custodians become nurse practitioners. And I mean, we've had people who really come to us working an entry level job um, and then have gone on to sort of, uh, you know, either change jobs through the, you know, just promoting, but, but then also sometimes, you know, like you said, a curveball happens like it did for me in my late 30s, you know, I was at a crossroads. I was like, that's it. I'm going to go into healthcare. So I went to the psych care program, a year long college program. Talk about bang for your buck. And then you're looking at a really great career um, for the rest of your life, and you're going to be helping people. So that's another, that's, you know, you can't put a price tag on that, but just in practical terms, it's definitely um, a very rewarding thing. Um, and I, I, I really, I can understand where people are at because I know that would be my headset right now if I was uh, not working where I'm working, and I, you know, COVID changes everything. You don't know what you're going to do, and um, so we welcome you to come. Just kind of think of it as an open house. You know, we're going to talk to you. You're going to talk to folks who work those jobs, who supervise folks who work those jobs, and they're going to talk about their own career path, how they became a state employee, what brought them to the state, what they like about their job. It's okay if they mention what they don't like about their job. But they are going to really address um, all the questions you want to ask. And if you have questions that you might think are difficult, please ask away. We're happy to answer them as best we can. Okay. And um, I, I think we have something for everybody. So anybody out there with any sort of work history or educational background, again, you don't have to be, you know, we have lots of folks who don't even have, uh, I shouldn't say don't even have, that sounds negative, but they don't have a high school diploma and they work for us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, this is going to be virtual. It's going to take place on Friday. You've got to be able, available from 10 to 11 and you have to go to KZOZ.com and answer the questions on that survey. Just click on the DSH uh, link there at KZOZ.com and then you'll be ready to rock come 10 o'clock on Friday yeah. morning. Yeah. Great talking to you, Richard. It was really great talking to you guys. And let me just give out my phone number. I'm so sorry to take up more of your time. 805-468-3384. That's 468-3384. If you have any questions about anything or you have any problems trying to get to the fair or if you just want to call us to task, you know, just to find out what's going on, we're happy to talk to you as best we can. And, uh, guys, I really do appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Hey, you bet. You bet. Uh, so a lot of great information there, Jeff. And don't forget, uh, we'll get again that it's this Friday and it's virtual. Uh, from 10 to 11. And like Jeff said, you go to KZOZ.com. I believe it's right below the, uh, is it below the poll question, Jeff? Yes, it is. Okay, it's right below the poll question. On the question. right-hand side. And yeah, you can't, can't miss see it. it. Big Golden State uh, logo, DSH, it says, click on that. You can answer the questions and get registered, and then uh, you're ready to uh, sit in and, and, and answer, ask have your have your questions be answered by the professionals at uh, the at Ash and um, for Friday's fair. It's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it could be life changing. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. How much would you be willing to spend to unsend your emails? Like say you sent an email and I don't know, like it got, zero. it got sent zero dollars. Oh, Cause you're always a man of your, uh, you never, I'm a man of my word. I'm a man of my convictions, a, Jeff. You've never sent an email and said, and said, Oh man, I shouldn't have put it that way in the email. Come on. Well, is Microsoft going to start charging you to unsend emails now? Well, I'm just saying there is, there is a or communication. Google. There is a communication medium that is going to allow you to unsend your sent messages. So what is it? If it's if it's not an email, what is it? It's Twitter. Twitter, you can unsend your tweets. Oh, baloney! This is lies. Jack Dorsey is such a crook and a liar. I don't trust this guy. Two ninety nine a month. He's a. Lo- I deleted Twitter off my phone. I'm not in. Yeah, of course. You Two ninety nine a month. Right. And, yeah. And you can and you can undo your tweets. But why? The, why does it have to cost money? Are they donating the money to some cause? No. To veterans, to the homeless population. No, they need to monetize Twitter. They haven't been able to figure out a way to do so. Oh, yeah. Jack Dorsey's just broke as a joke. Since 2010. I hate Twitter. I I hate Twitter. I'm all about other stuff. I don't like any of them, actually. Um, They have a tip jar as well. Um, Oh, of course they do. Give Jack Dorsey more money. 
No, no, it's going to go to people. Uh, you can pay. Like, if Hold you're on. a Twitter user, if you're a Twitter user, you can give. What is Jack Dorsey's worth? You can give, like, me a Twitter user. According to Forbes.com, Jack Dorsey's net worth is $11.1 billion. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. Tip that son of a bitch. He's doing good. The tip jar doesn't go to him. It, I mean, maybe, okay. maybe yeah, portions. Right. Maybe, yeah, right. Maybe, well, maybe, you know, by people spending $3 a month in order to be able to tip people, um, they he'll get a cut of that, I'm imagining, or it will drive more people to the platform. $11.1 billion, and they're charging you to delete your tweet. Um, run get away from twitter it's toxic well it is toxic i i i before if we can just get you to look past your hatred for twitter for whatever reason and think about what i I like the idea i don't like the people buying it what this will have i think it will lead to more toxicity (laughs) because people will send something and then they'll be like oh do i want to i can delete it that like oh no Never but once you it. send but it, it's out ahead, there. I could go ahead and delete it, but I could delete it after the fact. But somebody I mean, might have already taken a screenshot and reposted somewhere else. I think else. this is based on a timer, kind of like Google does with its emails, if you're in Gmail. How does that work, Chad? Well, it's a timer. You have like 15 seconds. This happens to me all the time. I think you have 15 seconds to um, un- undo the send on it. And the reason why being is... Is I'll undo the send because I forgot to do an attachment. I like I always oh, I put an attachment to it, and I'll be like, "Oh, I forgot to put the." attachment. This is what they need to do on your phone for texts. I do voice to text all the time, and I hit send, and then I realize that the the first sentence looked good, but this I I just I might have three sentences in there. First sentence looks perfect, so I hit send, and then I keep reading. I'm like, "Oh crap!" And then it says something either, yeah, really not bad. even readable. Or make sense and tangible, or that's not the word I'm looking for, but you know what I'm trying to say. It doesn't even make sense. Remember? And then I look like an idiot. And I'm like, son of a bitch, let me hit stop. You can't. Last, okay, if we know that people can go in and fix their mistakes, does that make it, I mean, I think Jack Dorsey is shooting himself in the foot in this one. Because we were talking about the benefits of Saturday, Saturday Night Live, the old way it was. Um, you know, before they started recording a lot of the segments, and now you only have four or five opportunities for uh, a flub, a mix-up, a breakdown on the cast performance of Saturday Night Live, whereas before you would have 12 or 13, it lent to more mistakes that were very comical in their nature because that's why you watch Saturday Night Live. Same thing with Twitter. If people have the ability to pull off their comments because they're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't really want to offend anybody, then it will make it less consumable of a platform. Yeah, I, because I, I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. That that's the best stuff is the ones that would go back and try to delete their tweets and realize that they can't because it's already been shared. One hundred percent. Like that's that's the ones I want to read. I want the platform that's going to give me everybody's scars, everybody's failures, everybody's pimples. If if there's a platform in which there's no more pimples and it's just uh, my edited words, I mean, why don't you just change the name of Twitter to, to my edited words for a cost? Because And that makes it boring. It makes me not want to be on there. Not that I'm on Twitter all that much anyways, but it is even further more of a reason not to be on Twitter because... I'm not going to. How get, would you want to be on Twitter? I'm because not going to get the honest answer. If 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 the you know, cancel culture community on Twitter doesn't like your point, they'll just block your account. Right. Okay. Well, that's so what's the point? That's fine. I mean, go 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 start your own thing or go get something else. Well, going. I don't I don't care to. I think all social media is toxic, no matter what the what the name of it is. Twitter, Facebook. I still have not given away the money today in the playlist. It's 200, 200 bucks today. Keep listening for your three songs. If you hear them, make sure you TikTok. get through before the third song is over. Instagram. Call or text, and you'll be an instant winner. It's 200 bucks right now. MySpace. It's all toxic.